Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think that we have met. I'm Fabio, your piano man. I'm the best big H you could get. It's great to have you with us. I think you will agree. It's where you find all your favorite people and even occasionally me. So sit back and relax and make yourself a cup of tea as we learn what it is to live a life of generosity. There's something special about this place full of crazy characters and imagination run wild. A place where the good news of Jesus spreads out all over the world. Join us as we plan it, film it and wrap it up. So it's important you start the script for Act 2 about generosity while I'm away, Dan. Got it, Dave. Uh, now, generosity is an important subject, and I want to make sure you're very clear. I'll be clear, Dave. Uh, sorry I can't be there, but my grandma has a bit of an emergency. Not a problem. What's that, Granny? OK, OK, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey Dan, what are you doing? Well, I have to write a script about generosity. But I, I don't think it applies to most of our audience. Well, what do you need to be generous, Dan? Money. <sighs> do you know what I would do if I had a million dollars? What would you do, Dan? If I had a million dollars, I would be generous with it all. I would buy the whole neighborhood candy and have a party in Albert Hall. If I had a million dollars, imagine all the good that I could do. Like buying a billion burgers to feed the elephants at the zoo. Hey, or at least a me? million, maybe just a million more. Then you see generosity hey, flowing out my door. Hey, all it needs a million. Maybe just a million more Then I could be more Why generous Than I ever was before If I had a million dollars I would spend it all on others A house for my mum And a car for my dad And deodorant for my brothers If I had a million dollars My whole life would be grand Get all my friends and hire a plane Spend a year in Disneyland All I need is a million Whoa, 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 that's not how it Maybe works Maybe just a million more then you see generosity flowing now, Marto. All it needs a million. Nah. Maybe just a million more. Then I could be more generous than I ever was before. All it needs a million. No. Maybe just a million more. My goodness, look at all this generosity spilling out onto the floor. All it needs a million. Maybe just a million more. Then I could be more generous than I ever was before. All I need's a million. Or maybe two or three. Thanks, Dan. Ah, oh, my shirt. Get changed. Let's go get a coffee. my vertically challenged toddler type person. Hi. It's so good to be here at church, no? Church. Whew, but I have had a rough week. No. So I tell to you, number one problem of week. You see, I have play date with my friend Boris. And he wants to play with all my best toys. Like with my uh, new shark car. Shark yeah, with my bouncy bouncy ball. Bouncy bouncy ball. And with my Professor Snuggles. Teddy. And I do not want to share with Boris. I am afraid he would like toys and I want to have toys for myself. So what can you help me out with this problem, my friend? Happy and no clap hands. What was that, my friend? Happy no hands. 
are you telling to me that if I choose to share generously, uh, my friend will be happy and I will make God happy and he will clap his hands because God loves a cheerful giver? Is that what you are telling to me, my friend? And that's what it's all about. Thank you, my friend. Oh, hey, you've cleared up my mind oh, on this one. So much better than oh. my idea. I wonder if there could be ways to be generous without a million dollars. I don't know. I was taking a walk with my little dog named Poopsie. We were having fun running around, playing with a frisbee. But I threw it too far. My precious ran towards a car. It'll happen so fast, but then I saw a man just walking. I called out and he turned around, saw my poopsie, and he scooped him right up. A total stranger saved my pup. Look out for an opportunity to be there for someone else. Look out for your community. There's always someone to help. It may not be easy, but it's the right thing to do. Look out for others. Cause God's looking out for you I was feeling down with no one else around Just gnarly Feeling sad for myself, left all alone In a pity party Then a friend rang my phone And told me You are not alone I said to her, I don't feel okay She said, alright I'll pray for you that God will come through in this dark night. Her words touched my heart when I felt like life was falling apart. Look out for an opportunity to be there for someone else. Look out for your community. There's always someone to help. It may not be easy, but it's the right thing to do. Look out for others. Cause God's looking out for you In a garden one night in Jerusalem A man was praying To his father above, is there another way? He was saying But he didn't back down Jesus said, your will be done He was taken away, arrested and tried Like some bad guy then sent to a hill and hung on a cross, just left to die. He could have stopped it all, but for us he took the fall. Look out for an opportunity to be there for someone else. Look out for your community, there's always someone to help. It may not be easy, but it's the right thing to do. Look out for others. Cause God's looking out for you I feel different Something on the inside has changed I think we need more than a coffee I'll ever be able to finish the script. I wish Dave was here instead of being at his grandmother's. Why is it his grandmother's? She's not feeling well, so he's travelled up with his mum and dad to help look after her. Wow, that is so generally practical of him. Yeah, but he usually writes the scripts with me. Oh, I could help write the scripts. Oh, thanks, Nath. That's really genuinely useful. Oh, if I could only think of ways to be generous. <sighs> Nathan, Mr. Man Dan, how are my two favorite customers? <sighs> you two look like you've been thinking of ways to be generous without having a million dollars in your bank account. Oh, how did you know? I've been hearing you two sing about it all day. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for you, oh, Mike got the answer. And an excellent singing voice. So you wonder about being generous You think it's harder than climbing Everest It's only for the financially adventurous You couldn't be further from the truth 
When you live a life of generosity, you're free from mediocrity and animosity. I know unconsciously you understand. It's not about the quantity you cash in your hand. You can be generous with your words. Generous with your smile. Looking out for one another. Helping people being kind. You don't need a million dollars or worry where to start. Because you find that generosity is living in your heart. So you're wondering about being generous. And now you know it's not something strenuous. You don't have to look up ideas on Pinterest. It all starts in your heart. Whoa! Well, the boys have learned a valuable lesson today by living a life of generosity. It doesn't just start in your bank account, it starts in your heart. Well, we loved having you here, and I hope to see you soon. One day, the wife of a man from the Guild of Prophets called out to Elisha the prophet, My husband, your servant is dead. You well know what a good man he was, devoted to God. And now the man who he owes money to is on his way to collect my two children as the payment of the debt. He's going to take my children as his slaves. What am I going to do? I don't want to lose everything I have. Elisha replied by saying, Tell me, what do you have in your house? The woman was baffled by his question because she knew she was very poor. I don't have anything, absolutely nothing, she said. Come to think of it, I guess I do have a little oil. Perfect, Elisha replied. We don't need much. Now listen, this is precisely what you must do. Go up and down the street and borrow jugs and bowls and every container you can find from all of your neighbors. I'm serious, get as many as you can. You're going to need them. Then I'll need you to go home and lock the door behind you. Then I want you to pour oil into each container and then when each is full, set it aside. Although the woman thought it was an unusual thing to do, she knew Elisha and she trusted him. The woman asked her boys to help her. They prepared each of the containers by wiping them clean. After they had done this, the woman got her small amount of olive oil and began to pour it into the first container. Quick, I need the next one, the woman called out to her sons. Here you are, mum. Her sons pulled the next container beside the full one. Okay, another, quickly, boys, she asked. Over and over, the oil was filling each of the containers right to the very brim. When all the jugs, bowls, and containers were full, she said to one of her sons, another one, please. But he responded, Mom, that's it, they're all full. We don't have any empty containers left. It was then, as she was filling the final container up, that the oil stopped when it reached the top of the jar. When she looked around her house and saw all the full jars, she was amazed. Then she went to find Elisha to tell him exactly what had happened. All she had done was follow his instructions. Elisha smiled, knowing God had performed a miracle before the woman and her children's very eyes. Now, he said, go sell the oil and clear all of your debts. Pay the man back with the money you make from all the oil that God has provided for you. Once again, the woman followed Elisha's instructions. She paid off her debts and fear of the future left her heart. God had made a way with the little she had. He had provided in her very time of need. What an incredible miracle that was. The widow only had very little, but God made a way to save her from losing her children. God is the expert at making something out of nothing. You can't outgive God, but maybe, just maybe, it's worth a try. That was so much fun. Before you go, we want to ask you a question. Is Jesus your best friend? The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have things that we've done and things in our hearts that aren't God's best for us, and that's called sin. Yeah, sin separates us from God. But the good news is, is that God loved you so much that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus. 
That's right. And Jesus was God's son. He came to earth, lived a perfect life, and then died on the cross and took all of our sin. But he didn't stay in the grave. Jesus rose from the grave, defeating death and sin forever. And the Bible says that if we say with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is God's son and that God raised him from the grave, that we will be saved. We will be a Christian, a child of God. And if you've never prayed that prayer, we would love to invite you and lead you in that prayer today. It's a decision that you make in your heart. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can pray this in your heart to Jesus today. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and you rose again. Forgive me of all my sins, of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus. I want to be a Christian, a child of God, for all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's amazing. That is literally the best decision that you can make. In the Bible, it says that there's a party that goes on in heaven every time someone makes that decision. So we're so excited for you and we just really wanna hear from you. If you made that decision, we really wanna hear from you. So tell your parents that you made that decision and to email us at kids at colonialchurch.life and we'll send you a little something special. We have a little gift that we'd like to give you guys and we're just so excited you'd make that decision. Yeah, and never forget Colonial Kids that God designed you with a purpose, that Jesus is your best friend and there's no junior Holy Spirit. God loves you so much and so do we. We'll see you soon.